Hello. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. It's Wednesday today. So, um, as you hop on, let me know what you're doing tonight. Say hi, come visit with me. I am creating a rose, felt rose, uh, cone. Hi, Cara. And I'm just gonna check and make sure that my settings are all okay. And see if I can pull up comments here. Let's see. Give me just a second. Hello, hello. If you're just joining, we are making a felt flower and I'm just, I uh, did a new setup with my computer uh, this weekend or yesterday-ish and got a new mic. So let me know if you can hear me okay. See if I can hear myself. Da -da -da -da. It looks like I have volume. Kara, do you can you hear me okay? Let me know if you can hear me, guys. Trying to get everything set up here. See if I can see some comp. Oh, I can hear you. Great. Thank you. My iPad is acting like it can't hear me, so we'll just ignore that then. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I am uh, making felt flowers. I'm on a felt flower kick, which is typically how it goes because um, they're very addicting, super easy to make, super fun to make. They're just one of those things that you can just sit in front of the TV and knock out a bunch, and then you have all these beautiful flowers to decorate with. So I have this cone, and I've got some stuff set up here for making some felt flowers. I've also got some on the side here that we will um, make as well. So as you're coming on, say hi. I'm gonna start by painting my cone uh, with red paint. Um, so I have a couple flowers already made. This is what we're making tonight. And then we're going to attach it to this cone and make this cute felt uh, flower cone slash tree. Um, and I want to paint my cone red just to make sure that if I don't cover the entire thing um, that it's not going to show a glaring white spot kind of help camouflage it a little bit. Okay, my paint's being difficult here. So what is everyone doing tonight? How's the weather where you're at? We uh, have some pretty cold weather right now. I think it was like negative 20 something. And then the wind chill just makes it that much worse. I'm just gonna use a black sponge brush and quickly get a coat of paint on this stone, st stone, styrofoam. <laughs> Cone here. Again, just to camouflage it in case 
as I put my flowers on, there's a little bit of the cone peeking through. You won't see the white. And this styrofoam actually is really easy to paint. It makes the paint fairly well. So hello, hello. I'm seeing some people join. Welcome. Like you're new, let me know. Comment new or comment new to the page or me. I guess I should have started out by saying my name's Birdie. And I love crafting and painting. And a couple of years ago, I discovered I love sharing that with others just as much. So much more fun when you can craft and paint and whatnot with a group of people. Let's just see if I can set that on the top here. Try and not be too messy with this paint. We have, thanks, Cara. Uh, Bonnie is crocheting a blanket in Georgia and it's warm. Lucky you, lucky you. I don't mind the cold. I actually don't mind the snow. We have lots of snow. It's just when that wind hits and it's, it's a little bit brutal. That's when it's a little unpleasant. But we have two crocheters. Cara's a crocheter too, so welcome. All right, so we've got that. We'll let that dry while we make some flowers. And I've already cut out some circles. So typically I'll just go through and cut out a bunch of circles of different sizes. Um, just for reference, for your reference, this is a five inch circle here and then a four inch circle and they can be any shape or any size uh, you could use a bowl you could use a plate to cut out and um, however you want to do it whatever you have whatever is convenient i just have these patterns here because i know what size they're going to make after you make quite a few of them it's kind of ha handy just to have somewhat of a pattern especially if you're trying to fit it on something okay so let's grab a circle and start what we're going to do is we're going to create a spiral cut in our circle so i'm going to start here and i'm just going to spiral my way in let me draw that out i think it's easier a little easier to see so i'm going to cut and just spiral in to the center until I'm left with just this little tab here. And so that's what we're gonna do. And we'll do that a couple times so you can see how that goes. And I don't trace it and I don't worry about um, my spiral being perfect. Flowers aren't perfect. So if we kind of just go for it and have a little imperfection in, our spiral, we end up with a bunch of different roses, different sizes, different petals, and I think it just looks so much better that way. So let's lay that back out like if it was back together. So that is what we cut, and there's that little tab in the center that we leave. This is going to be what we glue it together with. So we'll cut all of our circles here and then I'll come in and show you how to put those together. So hello, hello, welcome. We are making a belt rose cone. To say hi. Don't forget to give the video a quick little share so that others know about it and can join us and join in the chat all 
I should have said something other than the S word, I guess. Sprinkle, spread the joy. Just such a relaxing craft. I'm just gonna cut this little knot off here. It's one of those uh, mindless things that you can do to just kind of relax and kind of clear your mind. Kind of get lost in all the cutting and gluing and whatnot. Okay, so then I've got my big ones done. I've got a couple smaller ones here that I'm going to do, and I'll cut those as well. So I would say as I'm cutting my spiral, these, the, um, the space here is about a quarter of an inch to an inch. You don't want to get too narrow with your spiral, otherwise your roses end up being super flat and um, they don't have very much depth to them. So don't make them too, like if I were to just kind of make it super thin right there and I continued that all the way this would be a super flat rose and um, it, it's just a little bit harder to roll as well if you keep your spiral about a half an inch it tends to work out pretty well and there's other ways that you can um, do this method uh, with the circle and the spiral and I've seen people who I've tried it a couple times but I just prefer the straight spiral who create a little bit of a wave while they're cutting the spiral and that kind of creates some fuller or um, different uh, leaves in your rows so for instance, they'll come in and kind of try and do this around it. And it's pretty and it works great. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but this straight spiral is just super easy, super fast to do. Crafting is relaxing and fun. Yes, it is, Kara. Absolutely. I think a lot of people with crafting or or painting, I love I love to paint too, um, get hung up on needing a um, an end result that produces something that they can give away or sell or they can use in their home. And I am in the mindset of I just like to craft for the process itself. A lot of the times I give away my stuff and sometimes um, I'll use it in my tokor, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's just a craft I did for myself and it doesn't have really a purpose. It was just for the fun of it. So I created this rose and didn't stop to talk about what I was doing. So let me do that again. All right, so if we're looking, let me pull that one that's nice and flat. So let's look at this rose here that we've cut. Um, we're gonna start by rolling the flower from this point here. And if we open it up a little bit, this part of the spiral is actually the bottom of the flower. That's what gives us this flat surface. And then as we roll um, with the way that we cut the spiral, it just kind of creates those, those petals that bloom out from that center. 
So the main thing that you want to remember is that this, the bottom of the spiral or the inside is your bottom and that's what you want to keep flat. This part on the outside is what's going to create your petals. So I'm going to just start fo by folding this over and it's kind of hard to see. We're just going to keep rolling it. Again, this is that inside of the spiral. So my focus is really just keeping this as flat as I can. And sometimes it will um, kind of pop out and you can just start over. But again, nice and flat on the inside there. And then as we look on the other side, you can start to see these petals start to bloom out. So we're just going to keep rolling. And depending on how tight you roll will determine the rows as well. So I kind of keep it snug, but I don't pull it and twist it and put a lot of pressure in there. It's just a gentle roll, but it's also not super loose that it's gonna fall out. Pulling it too hard and trying to tug on it will force your petals to, um, not bloom out, but be nice and tight in that center. Okay, so again, we wanna keep that flat bottom there. And once it gets to a point where I can hold it, I'll hold it with these two fingers and just roll it until I get to the end. Again, I'm concentrating on keeping that flat bottom there just kind of letting that flower bloom on the other side, whatever it's doing, it's gonna do. Okay, and then once I get to this uh, center piece here, it acts like a tab. So what that's gonna be is like a little door or a tab that's gonna, um, we're gonna put glue here and it's gonna cap off the bottom of our flower. So I'm gonna just use some hot glue and we'll fold that over and then press. Okay, so there we go. So let's do that again. This one is one of those smaller roses. And if we're looking at it um, from the spiral, remember the inside of the spiral is your bottom. So I'm gonna flip it over because for me, it makes sense to keep my flat side on my left side here. So I'm just gonna start by rolling it or folding it really. You're not really rolling it when it's super tiny like that. And then we are going to just continue and roll, keeping that flat bottom. This is creating that uh, really pretty center and you can already start to see our petals are kind of starting to bloom out, fold out. And when it gets to a point, I grab it Kind of like a thimble, um, not a thimble, a uh, bobbin. That's what it reminds me of. And then we're going to just roll, turn, making sure that bottom stays nice and flat. We get to the end, we have our tab here. And we will put a dab of glue there. I'm using hot glue, a hot glue gun for this um, because to me that's just the easiest, but you could definitely use any glue, uh, even super glue, Elmer's glue, um, the tacky, I can't remember what the name of it is, something tacky glue. Um, those just take a little bit longer to dry, so you would want to hold those there. And then what, another thing that you can do, so this looks um, really pretty just as it is, 
Uh, but what you could do is you can kind of tug on your uh, petals as well if you want to open them up. Felt is pretty um, flexible and and it has some leeway so we can open up these flowers a little bit and it kind of changes the shape of those. Okay, so I'm going to just continue making these. We've got a few more here that I'll roll. So if you have any questions, let me know. And if you've made felt flowers before, drop, uh, let me know in the comments. If you have a felt stash at home. We were on a felt kick about, oh geez, two years ago. And I was making felt flowers wreaths and felt flowers this and felt flowers everything and had developed quite an extensive stash of felt that um, we had to downsize this last summer. I had a garage sale and had to let a lot of it go. It was, it was a little excessive to say the least. I think I had like... 30 or 40 of almost every color Hobby Lobby sells. But in my defense, we don't have a Hobby Lobby or a Walmart or a Michaels or really anything like that. So I tend to stock up when I go out of town. Cara, you've made felt flowers for a house out of cardboard a few years ago. They are fun. And the fabric is just so, there's just that really soft texture to them that they just are so pretty when you get a bunch of them together. And I just love them. I love how they look. And after you do a few, you can get pretty fast at them. It's a great activity to do while you're watching TV. All right, I think this is our last one, and we'll start gluing. Okay. So, let's see. My cone isn't quite dry. I'm going to blow dry it real quick just to finish it off. So give me just a second, excuse the noise.
Okay, I think we are done. Let me get this out of the way. And we'll bring out all the flowers. All right, so I think I'm gonna start, now the, the planning here comes in. I'm gonna start at the top and just put uh, one of the smaller flowers just right on the top here. Cover that up. And then I'm gonna take these smaller ones and build around the edge with those. Uh, Cora, I would love to see the house. That would be amazing. Yes, please. I'd love seeing creations. It's how we get inspired. Okay. So we're getting ready to launch some Valentine's kits, some DIY kits, and I think this is going to be a perfect little accent piece to, to the kits. So we've put some together already, and it's kind of just fun to have a a couple little extra pieces on the side there. Or as accent pieces. All right. How's that looking? Is that just gorgeous? I love it. And of course, with the glue gun, you have uh, spider webs everywhere. We'll get those at the end. So let's see, what do we got left for smaller flowers? Try and keep those at the top, maybe. We got a couple there. This one. Okay, so we, I think we'll be able to do another row of small flowers. I think I can lay this down now safely. And what I'm going to do, instead of coming straight down, I'm going to put one in between so I don't have a pattern. And it will look more full and natural that way without it looking like there's a row of um, flowers. And these are tucking very nicely in into each other's petals. So I don't think I'm gonna see much of that cone. But better safe than sorry. And hopefully I made enough flowers. We might have to have a round two or something. Grab some more glue. Okay, give it a good squeeze. And then we're going to just go right into these bigger flowers. And again, try and tuck them in the gap between the two.
And if you didn't have a styrofoam cone, you could always just make a chipboard or cardboard cone and do the same thing. And that would be just um, as pretty. So you're not going to even see the underneath anyways. Just give it a good squeeze. Does that look great? Hi, Sarah Lynn, how are you tonight? Oh, lucky you. You're in the warm Arizona. Awesome. It's supposed to warm up uh, next week, or so I've heard. Some rumors of maybe a heat wave coming through, so um, it sounds like your timing for your trip was perfect for temperature-wise. Oh, I'm so glad your mom likes her joy box. Yay. Okay, we are going to need a couple more. So we'll see how fast I can knock out a couple more roses. What time is it? We're about 30 minutes in and finish this finish this here let's see i really packed them in yes bring the sunshine back yes please okay let me cut a couple more flowers here and uh, we'll finish this up. I had felt on hand just in case. We've got to see what it looks like. This is going to be super pretty. I could just imagine this as a display on a table with maybe three other or two other trees and some coordinating colors. I think that would be so pretty. This is the only size of cone I have, um, but I definitely am thinking I need to make two others in different sizes. So we'll have to make our own cones. All right, maybe six more. I think we should be good there. <clears throat> and there are a little bit wonky circles, but that's okay. Again, flowers are not perfect, and so we don't want to have perfect petals, perfect circles, perfect spirals. So a trick here is cutting two at a time. I'm cutting two spirals at a time. And I actually cut out two circles at a time. Felt is really nice about, you know, sticking together or staying together. And so it makes it super easy to cut two things at a time. And just, it's kind of like Velcro.
So if you were making felt cones, what color would you do? So I'm using my felt for felt flower cones for Valentine's Day. Kind of a Valentine's decoration. But these are something that if you put them, if you made them to match your decor, I don't see why they couldn't just be kind of an all year round thing. It would be really pretty too in a little girl's room. Ara would do green. Ooh, that would be pretty. I'm I'm imagining a um a sage green or a uh, olive green. Oh, that sounds lovely. Pink would be pretty too. White, white would be super classic and I think just classy looking. I'm going to glue these on while I make them so I don't make more than I need, although I probably need these last little bit. And it gets a little bit difficult at the end here. I think I'm going to need maybe a small one there. And tuck and bring them down a little bit. The other thing you could do with these is put little beads in the center. Um, like, a, like a little white or a pearl bead. I think we're going to have just enough. I might have to make a small one just to finish off this one little section here, but I can do that later. At least we'll get a good idea of what this cone is going to look like after all is said and done. So as I was doing this one, it kind of got away from me. If you can see the center kind of pulled inside and it's starting to come out here, uh, you could, if it gets too out of hand, just let it go and re-roll it. But to fix this, I was able to just push my center back up to make that flat. And now it's kind of got that nice indent on the other side. So... Again, these are super easy and flexible and can't really go wrong with these guys. All right, let's glue these two on and see where we're at here. Thinking I might go there. There. And 
then we've got one more right there. All right. Just gonna give it a good squeeze. We're gonna pull all of our glue spider webs off here. And there we go. There is our belt rose cone tree, or just cone, I guess. What do you guys think? Who's ready to give it a try? Thanks guys. Thank you, thanks. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I hope you guys have a good rest of the evening and I will visit with you later with the next craft. I've got a couple things planned for the next couple weeks, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Getting organized um with crafting so have a good evening thanks again and we will chat with you later safe travels sarah lynn